<coughs> after another fun morning at Mustard Seed, we've, uh, we're going to move into the, uh, the section of the Hebrew Scriptures where we find the prophets and Ezekiel chapter 37. Uh, it's the prophecy that Ezekiel offers of the valley of the dry bones pretty remarkable vision that he has uh, in a pretty remarkable time in the history of Israel because of course the people of Israel have been uh, vacillating between Egypt and Babylonia as their main ally. Both Egypt and Babylonia were much more powerful than Israel and uh, they were being overthrown variously by each one and having vassal kings installed who were uh, representatives really of foreign governments who just kept an eye on things and took all the wealth of Israel and gave it to their uh, parent nation um, and Israel kept trying to decide whether it would go with Babylon or Egypt depending on who looked like they were the stronger at the time and uh, as we meet Ezekiel and this prophecy we find that um, Babylon is prevailing and has already taken a number of the people of Jerusalem into captivity and Ezekiel it seems is one of them. Uh, others are still holdouts in Jerusalem and there's a bunch of false prophets who are sending messages like just hang in there guys won't be long everything will be all right and Ezekiel has been prophesying in exile saying it's not going to be all right. I wouldn't hang on, you're just going to die a painful death. May as well give up now, come into exile peacefully. You've been unfaithful, this is judgment, put up with it and we'll move on from here. So the people are pretty tired out. Things have not been going well for them for a long time and they've tried everything in their power and none of it has worked. And so now they're faced with a situation where they basically feel dead, not just um, like lots of people have died, because certainly that would have happened, but even those who are alive feel dead inside. They feel like a dead people. And in that context, Ezekiel has this vision of the valley of dry bones, dead ex-people, as it were and God gives him the prophecy to call for the breath of God to bring sinews and so forth and make them alive and the breath of God comes in from beyond them, inside of them and makes them alive again. It's a very potent uh, prophecy, very powerful in the context where people are struggling and even today there's a lot to be said for a prophecy that offers that kind of hope in that kind of desperate a situation. So we're going to look at that on Sunday at Mustard Seed. So if you've been having a hard time and you're just about out of resources, and let's face it, lots of us find ourselves in that category at the moment, and uh, you've tried everything and exhausted all your options, and you're bordering on hopelessness, and maybe you're already there, well, this prophecy has a message of hope beyond anything you've tried so far and uh, it comes from without but it ends up coming within it's a hope that reinvigorates the heart so that you're no longer a dead person walking or a dead person not walking but an alive person very much alive it coincides of course with Pentecost uh, the season where the church celebrates the coming of the Holy Spirit to the church, customarily understood as the birth of the church. And um, we see that in this prophecy of Ezekiel's, there's some parallels with the coming of the Spirit. So um, we're just going to look at it in that context as well. So come along. Um, always good to have a breath of fresh air, which is the coming of the Holy Spirit. And uh, who knows what will happen? Who knows how God will show up with us in that context? But we're looking to find out. God bless. See you on Sunday at Mustard Seed. Place to be.